This is a Troy built horse tiller, an old one, and got a carburetor issue with it. There might be more. It started up and ran after sitting since last year and uh, didn't run very long, a few seconds, and then it quit, and then I couldn't start it again. So I took the carburetor bowl off, and there was some brown powder in it. I uh, cleaned that out, put it back on without cleaning because I was over at the garden. And I put this back on and ran it for not very long. I think I did a couple rows, maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then it quit running. Couldn't start it again. And so I brought it over here. I have another tiller. It's a better one. I bought it used at Home Depot. It was in their rental stuff. And I bought it from them, and uh, and it it still runs good. They just wanted to upgrade and get a new one, and they sold it for about oh less than half of what they sell for new. New, it's a twenty-six hundred dollar tiller. It's a Honda, and not just a Honda motor, but Honda brand tiller, three speed. Anyway, I've got neighbors that want to borrow and rent my my tiller this time of year, and I want to rent loan this tiller out and not the uh, the Honda. I want to keep that because sooner or later it's going to come back broken and I'd rather it be this one that comes back broken not the Honda. So I had to finish my job with the Honda but I said all that to say I'm going to go through this carburetor again. I'm going to take it off and uh, and see what we find in there. First thing I'm going to do is take the nut off the bottom. This is a Tecumseh motor by the way so the carburetor cleans up pretty easy similar to a, a Honda or a Briggs carburetor but it has an idle adjusting screw in the bottom that is um, or a jet I should say an uh, adjusting screw in the bottom that's adjustable and that's one nice thing about a Tecumseh carburetor is that it has another adjustment that you can actually do while you're out there working Before I take that carburetor bowl off, I'm going to take one of these clamping uh, vice grips, hose clamp. Very handy to have if you work on anything like this. And just put that on the fuel line. I'm going to take a half inch wrench. Take the bowl off. Before I do that, I'm going to count the turns I have preset on this. I'm just looking at the screwdriver slot right there. I'm going to count half, one, half, two, it's slightly over two, two and a quarter maybe. Half. One, half, two. Actually, that gas is coming out pretty yellow. And I don't know if that's because of the winter treatment I put in it, or if that gas is, has already turned bad. Let me get me a little parts pan. Little meat tray from the grocery store. I save those. Not all of them, but the ones just to make sure I have enough of them in here. For... Always use stuff like that in the shop. The gas doesn't smell bad, but it does look a little bit different. i clean that bowl up a little bit with a wire brush. And I'm going to spray in here. I'm not claiming to do a carburetor rebuild on this. It's just a quick cleanup. I'm trying to focus in. I'm holding a mirror underneath the carburetor. And that big hole in the middle that has a little one next to it, right in the center of that big hole, 
there's a brass fitting, a little tiny brass fitting. And what I'm going to do is stick the little red straw the little red straw that, that um, comes with a can of cleaning fluid my favorite cleaning fluid is brake cleaner the flammable one I get I get the highly flammable brake cleaner because it's a excellent oil dryer it dries super fast it's very strong has one and it's an excellent starting fluid it has one downfall and that is it is stronger than carburetor cleaner which is good because it cleans better than carburetor cleaner but it's worse because if you get it on certain plastic and rubber parts it'll damage them uh, you got to get it back off of there real quick or else it'll make the parts uh, it'll start eating into them not all of them but a lot of them o-rings and stuff I've had those stretch and swell out of shape where they don't fit anymore but anyway there won't be any of that where I'm going with this I'm gonna put this I gotta lay on my back to do it but I'm gonna put this straw right in the center of that hole if I can find it can't see it And that'll clean that out pretty good. It's a plastic float. I'm not going to let that stay on there real long. And I'm going to hold the float up there and then blow us off. Now this little piece here has little jet holes in it. I'm going to take this screw out and I'm going to clean this thing out too real good. See if we can get a close up of me doing that. I already counted my two and a quarter turns that I had in there. I'm going to reuse this gasket so I've got to be careful I don't break that. But I think I cleaned this out the other day when this was giving me trouble. It was dirty and I think it's clean now from before. <coughs> yeah, I don't see anything in it. I'm just cleaning off the... This had some little brown crusty stuff around the edge where the mating surface for the gasket was. Just taking a little brass wire brush. I get these, I get bunches of these at Harbor Freight. It don't cost much a buck or two for a package of a brass, a steel, and a plastic. I get two or three packs at a time. And use them for whatever they might get used for. A lot of wood up in the front there. Can't quite get to the end of the brush. I probably need to trim some of that off. My gasket is a little bit crusty so I'm just kind of taking my fingernail and cleaning it off with that a little bit. I don't have enough indoor storage. This stuff sits outside all winter. And when it's raining sideways, it gets rained on because I don't have it all covered up. We didn't have too bad of a winter. 
I was out of work. That was the only bad thing. We we got down coal. We got down in the single digits and hanging around zero a couple of days a few times, but it didn't last. Actually, I think this was a pretty mild winter. Putting this thing back together, I don't know how important it is, but the bottom of the bowl has a, a low spot on one side and a high spot on the other, but they're pretty close. It's only maybe an eighth of an inch difference, but in any case, I'm going to put that low spot over here where the, low, where the bottom of the float bowl is going to go. I don't know why, if it really matters or not. There might be a right way to do that, and I may not be doing it right, but that's just the way I'm going to do it, and I hope it uh, turns out to be okay like that. The gasket will normally stick right on a, a shoulder on the bottom of the carburetor, but this one's not sticking there too good. I think it might be slightly big. Anyway, I'll just screw this thing back into the bottom of it. Yeah, it's going to fight with me. i got to do it laying on my back. The gasket goes on better up here, but it doesn't want to stay. i got to put it up there first, hold it, and then try to situate the bowl onto it. Hopefully, I could just turn this left and right, work it on there. I think I did. Yeah, I think it did. It's got to be on there tight, so that when you screw this on there tight, you can adjust that final adjustment, and it'll be right. Count these turns again. Half, hold one, half, two, and a quarter. Okay, there's my quarter. Half, one, half, two. Now, this breather hose is messed up. I don't have another one for it, I just have to stick it on there like it is. Got a crack on the side, but it's not that important. Probably going to change the gas in this before I start it up. I'm going to take a parts cleaning brush and go inside this gas tank with it because there's that yellow stuff is in there, and that's where it came from. I think the well, this isn't going to go around the corners very well. 